Okay, uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, CMB picture as uh, sort of the baby picture of the universe. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about uh, the uh, the anisotropy of the cosmic microwave background. Uh, the CMB shows a high degree of isotropy. Uh, it was you look the same direction in every direction. You look. Uh, abstract, subtracting out the Milky Way foreground radiation, we obtain the very, in every direction, the same black body temperature. Uh, however, the isotropy is not perfect. Uh, the great achievement of the COBE uh, uh, improved by, by better angular resolution of uh, uh, WMAP and uh, now Planck satellite observations was that the first detection of slight variation of temperature. Okay. First at the one part in thousand level associated with motion of local group of galaxies. Then at one part in uh, 10,000, uh, uh, I'm sorry, one part in 100,000, uh, which, which I explained that holds the key to our understanding of the origin of structure in the universe how the primordial of plasma evolved into uh, stars and galaxies and clusters of galaxies. And it provides us with another means to measure the matter energy the content of the universe as well as many other cosmological parameters. Here's a picture uh, taken to nine year observation by WMAP collaborations. Okay. These are different shades of different color represent different temperatures. Uh, we're talking about uh, micro Kelvin uh, resolutions. So the CMB astrophotography turns out is a primary means for quantitative cosmology. So, uh, and uh, here's a picture of by European Space Agency Planck satellite it was launched in 2009 to study CMB in even greater detail than ever before. It covers a wider frequency range in more bands and uh, at higher sensitivity than WMAP. So to, we say this is a, a universe baby picture. What do I mean by that? Uh, the free stream photons creates around photon decoupling time uh, uh, 380,000 uh, years ago, uh, after the Big Bang, and the universe has an approximate age of, uh, since the universe has an approximate age of 14 billion years. So if we regard the universe, let's say we regard the universe as, uh, as a 100-year-old person, and uh, so the, the age, 100, uh, the age divided by this uh, time when the picture was created, it's trying to be around by 365 times 100. So it's, uh, so the CN, if, if the universe is about 100 years old, the same B picture is, is uh, like a baby, a one day old baby picture. Okay. Although the, uh, each point on the sky has a black body spectrum, in but one half the sky, the spectrum corresponds a slightly higher temperature, while the other half is slightly cooler, with respect to the average background temperature. Okay, so, uh, so the hottest part to the coldest part, the difference is about uh, 3.35 uh, millikelvin. Okay, so this uh, this this difference divided by the say uh, 2.27 Kelvin. Uh, come out to be about one part in a thousand times cosine theta. Theta is measured from the hottest spot to the coldest. Okay. So this dipole distortion is simply the Doppler shift caused by the net motion of our own galaxy due to gravitational attraction resulting from the uneven distribution of masses in our cosmic neighborhood. Namely shows directly that the local group is traveling towards the Virgo uh, cluster of the uh, galaxies at about uh, 600 kilometer per second. And this peculiar motion is measured with respect to the frame 
in which CMB is isotropic. Okay. So CMB rest frame is for the inertia frame for us. Uh, the, the existence of such a CMB rest frame does not contradict special relativity. Special relativity only says no internal physics measurement can detect absolute motion. Namely, physics law must be covariant. They may not single out any absolute rest frame. And covariance does not mean that we cannot compare motion relative cosmic structure such as microwave background. Space may not be thin, but the CMB certainly is. Space not a thing means space for the equation be independent of uh, uh, coordinates, but uh, CMB is a particular uh, thing. It could be a particular coordinates. Nor does CMB rest frame violate the isotropy assumption underlying the Robertson Walker space time, because each point in isotropic, isotropic space time must have an observer defined by at the rest respect to the covariant frame. To whom the universe appears the same in every direction, but there's no reason to expect the Earth or Sun or Milky Way or local group to be at rest. There's certainly no expectation that every observer sees the same thing every day, everywhere he looks. But at the same time, there's no definite explanation why the CMB rest frame defines the inertia frame for us. Uh, of course, the Marx principle would certainly suggest there's this not coincident. There's a reason, for example, you expect that the, the average mass uh, determines the inertia. So, what's the origin of what's the physical origin of this inhomogeneity? Aside from this one one part thousand level dipole and isotropy. The background radiation is seen to be quite isotropic. The CMB is a snapshot of early universe, so its observed isotropy is direct evidence for our working hypothesis of the cosmological principle of a homogeneous isotropic universe. And uh, this value is back, this is back to photon decoupling time. Nevertheless, the I, the isotropy should not be perfect because the observed universe has all sorts of structures, some superclass clusters, galaxies, and large voids are as large as, as 100 megaparsecs across. Such a basic feature of our universe must be reflected in the CMB in the form of smooth temperature uh, and isotropy. So in which there must be some sort of matter density and then uniformity at the time of photon decoupling, which would have brought about the temperature and homogeneity. Because then the photons travel from denser region will be gravitational redshifted and uh, therefore arrive cooler, while the photon from less dense region would do less work and arrive warmer. So therefore resulting in slight temperature uh, unevenness. This is a picture of the uh, uh, cosmic background with different, slight different temperature. Such a small temperature variation is about uh, 30 micro Kelvin uh, coming from different directions will finally detect it, provide evidence for a primordial density and uniformity that the under gravitational attraction grew into the structure of stars, galaxies cluster galaxies that we observe today. So this temperature variation, one part in 100,000 is smaller than expected. You know, you expect to, to generate the structure, you do more. Uh, expect based on the observed structure of the baryonic matter. But this discrepancy can resolve by the existence of dark matter. Dark matter has no electromagnetic interaction. Its density and homogeneity does not directly produce temperature and homogeneity in the cosmic fluid. That can be seen in the CMB and isotropy. In fact, we expect that the gravitational clumping of dark matter informing the structure took place first, you know, before the baryonic uh, inhomogeneity. The corresponding clumping of the baryonic matter 
uh, because Berman, of course, have electromagnetic interactions, was countered by radiation pressure until after the photon was decoupled. So it was uh, uh, when back dark matter can clumping due to gravity, Berman can also clumping, but then the baryonic clumping is resisted by radiation pressure. Once the baryonic structure was formed, it tends to fall into the gravitational potential well of already formed dark matter scaffolding. So this early growth of density perturbation for the non-baryonic dark matter means less baryonic inhomogeneity at photon is needed to produce the structure see today. So it's less delta T over T in the baryonic matter at decoupling time uh, is needed if the bulk of the matter has no electromagnetic interactions. So in with dark matter forms the cosmic scaffolding for matter distributions. Okay. This is a computer simulation which has the filaments of dark matter uh, underpin the universal structure of galaxy and galaxies and the and the baryonic matter falls into the gravitational wells in the concentrated part of the dark matter. Of cosmic inflation, primordial gravitational waves, and the CMB pulsation. This is really a chapter 10 material, but I'll just give you a preview. Where did the primordial density perturbation come from? Okay. The favorite theory of Big Bangs in chapter 10 is that the cosmic time, extremely early, with 10 to the minus 35 seconds, something like this, and the fluctuation of some scalar quantum field led to a state having a large cosmological constant, which drove exponential expansion of the universe. So this is what we call cosmic inflation. The quantum fluctuation of this inflaton field, uh, the scalar field, is in general stretched to mac macroscopic sizes, formed the density unevenness that would see the subsequent structure formation, and brought about the CMB temperature and anisotropy. Okay, so the so the uh, quantum fluctuation is probably the cause of the origin of the uh, density unevenness. Furthermore, this anisotropy radiation, okay, will in turn lead through Compton scattering to CMB polarizations. Okay. Of particular interest in theoretical prediction, such inflationary epoch would generate tensor perturbation of space-time, which means produce gravitational waves which will give rise to a unique pattern polarization called B-mode polarization. This detection will provide us with a direct evidence of gravitational waves and of inflationary theory of Big Bang. So that's the first part of lecture 27.